Hello and welcome to part five of the reinforcement learning theory tutorial series, where today we're going to be going over values and Q values. If you haven't catched, or if you haven't caught the more recent episodes of this, uh, this should be in a playlist on my channel. Definitely check it out. If you're confused as to what's going on, I go over reinforcement learning theory from the beginning, but today let's jump into it and let's jump in to Q values and values. You probably, if you're interested in reinforcement learning, you might've actually heard of Q values before, maybe not. Uh, but it's used a lot in lots of algorithms. I think it's sort of the entrance for lots of people into reinforcement learning. Um, I'm actually not sure why it's so popular. Um, Q values are used in lots of things, but Q learning I, is probably maybe what you've heard of. Um, anyway, today we're going to sort of define what those are. Uh, what is What are Q values? What are they used for? Um, well, I guess that's exactly what I'm hopefully about to explain to you. So let's erase this and get some space to work with. So if you remember from last video, this is actually going to be very similar to sort of the expected returns we went over last time. So let me start out by writing that. Um, oh, didn't mean to write that. Uh, so last time we had j of pi or j of the policy is equal to the, ex oh, the expected return of trajectories where these trajectories are a distribution over all trajectories from the or sampled from the policy so this was the definition we had last time right um so j is ex essentially our expected returns for, uh, given a policy so let me now define what value is value in reinforcement learning is this so the value oh my gosh the value of a certain policy, and value is always tied to a policy, right? Um, you can't say value in general. You have to give the value of a certain policy um, at a certain state. And the value of a certain state given a policy is the expected uh, return of trajectories given uh, S0 equals S over trajectory sampled from this pi policy. Cool, so what does this mean? Uh, this essentially means, and you'll notice that these are really similar, right? This uh, j and this value term. Um, what's the difference here? Well, there's actually only one difference, and that difference is this right here, this s0 equals s. So what is this? Uh, well, you see the little bar right here in our expected. Uh, this essentially just means given, right, or when. Um, so it's the expected value of the returns of these trajectories when s0 equals s. So what's s0? s0 just means the first state in this trajectory. And s, um, well, s is a parameter, right? It's a variable that we, we, we can input into this function. So what this is saying is we give this value function a state, and it gives us back the return or the expected reward starting from that state. So what's the difference here? Well, this j is essentially the return from a trajectory, but we don't get to specify what the starting state is. It's always um, whatever the starting state of the entire trajectory was, while as the value, we can start at any state. So for example, if I have a game of, let me go back to white here, um, if I have a game of tic-tac-toe, um, and I put an O here to start out, well, I can say what's the value of this state and it would give me some number right uh, maybe the value is 0 0.75 um, I don't know I'm just making things up here uh, but then if you had the next player went uh, put an x here maybe this goes down because that was a good move for x uh, so maybe it goes to 0 0.6 I have no clue um, but you see the value is very specifically the expected return from a particular state that's all it is. It's it's fairly simple, especially if you did watch the last episode, which if you haven't, I highly recommend it, um, because there's, there's it's a very small jump here. So that's what value is. Now let's get into Q values. I'm going to use this space soon too. So let's get rid of this. I hope you like my little smiley face. You know, always like to be positive. Um, the positive channel. So what is Q value? Let me write out the formula for you. So Q value of a policy. Again, Q value is always attached to a policy. You can't just say the Q value of something in general. Um, it has to be the Q value given a policy. The state and action are parameters equals the expected returns 
of trajectories given S0 equals S and A0 equals A. And this is over again, as you probably guessed, uh, where trajectories are sampled from our policy. So what does this mean and how is this different from value, right? Um, so let me actually, let me maybe draw some or delineate some lines between these. So, oh, uh, so here we have few stuff and here we have value stuff. And here we have J stuff, general return stuff. Um, maybe we'll add on, maybe I shouldn't have done that, but oh well. Um, so Q values, well, how's this different from value? You'll notice there's this extra A term, right? So we have an extra input parameter, A. Um, and we also have this extra condition here, A0 equals zero. So if you understood what value was and how this S0 works, well, this is the same thing, right? For Q value, we put in an extra action and that is now part of we now that's now a condition we have to start with that action um, so it's the expected return of a given state if we start with a certain action and then after that all the actions are sampled via our policy right here so if i were to give another sort of tic-tac-toe example uh, whereas a value we could get a value of this state right we can get a q value of maybe our state is an O here. And what's our action? Maybe our action is, maybe, maybe, let's say this is our state. Maybe our action is this. Oh, sorry, no, let's say this. Um, so I've, in this, by this action, I mean we're putting an O in the very center here. So the resulting sort of board here would be, I don't have much room, but uh, X, O, O, right? And that would be the resulting board if we if we plug this action um, and this should be associated with some value right and maybe it's pretty good because you got two in a row i don't know maybe it's 0 0.8 i really have no clue again i'm just making these numbers up off the top of my head <laughs> um but the key here is that on top of value on top of just having the value of a given state it's the value of a state action pair or the value of essentially if we were to take this action or start by taking this action and then keep using actions from our policy that are on policy, what's the value of our current state, if, if that's the case? Um, so one thing you'll notice is that this is very similar to value. And if you notice that, I'd say, yeah, yep, you're right. It is very similar. We only have the extra action. Um, and you can kind of see that each of these are building on each other, right? For each uh, additional thing we're adding here, we just have an additional parameter. And these are actually, there are cases where all, the, are, all of these are equal, right? So you could say, for example, the value, um, the value, let me maybe draw another sort of dividing line here. Oh my gosh, why isn't this uh, color selection working? There we go, there we go. Hopefully we have enough space over here. Um, but our value of a state equals, I don't think that's completely white, but oh well. Um, it's kind of bothering me, so I'm gonna, there we go, that should fix it. I'm sorry, the value of a state is equal to J of this policy if, I guess you could say S equals um, a distribution over starting states. Or I guess that would be P0. Is, is it? Um, so essentially all this is saying, right, is the value is just equal to this expected return if the starting state is always uh, the distribution over all the starting states we're expecting. Um, whereas the Q value, I'm not sure if you can hear that train in the background, but the Q value of a policy, um, SA, equals the value of these policies in the state um, when a is on policy. And what does on policy mean? I want to define this because you'll hear this on policy a lot. On policy just means that A is sampled from our policy. That's all it means. You'll hear this a lot, so, so don't forget this. Um, you'll, I mean, we'll probably go over it again, but on policy just means that the actions we're taking are sampled from our policy. Um, so an example of something that would be off policy is if we just chose a random action instead of whatever our policy is, right? That would be an off policy action. Um, 
So when A is on policy, though, when it's sampled from reactions, the key value actually equals the value. Um, so we're, as you can see, as we're going down the line here, we're just adding more parameters or more stipulations. Cool. So this actually isn't too difficult. The next question you might be asking, and we ask this at the end of every uh, tutorial, of course, why? Why do we do this? Why do we need this? What's the value, pun intended, of having a value in Q value? And the answer is similar to the last times. And it's that these are sort of more tools in our tool belt of how we are going to solve reinforcement learning problems. So we can actually craft two more different sort of algorithms here. So let me erase everything that isn't, aren't these. And let me actually put these right next to each other. So the Q uh, S A equals the expected value of the trajectory sample from the policy. Uh, sorry if it's a bit sloppy. S zero equals S and A zero equals A. Cool. Um, so now I can erase all this other stuff. Let's go ahead and make some more room because we have two more equations and it's essentially using this value and this Q value, we now have two more objectives or goals we can look to optimize when we later start making algorithms that solve for the best policies. Before, remember, we were trying to maximize J. Well, now we have two different sort of optimal uh, things we can go for. That should be good. Uh, so let's chain this up here. Um, so now we have two more things we can go for, right? Um, one of those is going to be the optimal value. Maybe we're trying to learn the optimal value function because you could imagine if you could learn the optimal value function, um, well, you, that, that would help you learn, right? Because you could always essentially take actions that you think would give you states with, um, if you could predict the next state, you could always uh, take actions that would give you the optimal value. Because if you're in the optimal value state, well, you're doing as, as good as possible. So remember this little star here means the optimal um, sort of value. Uh, or I guess it would sort of mean the optimal policy kind of. Um, but anyway, it's a max over, and we're changing our policy here. The expected trajectory sampled from I uh, returns of these trajectories where S zero equals S. So what's the difference here, right, between this value and this optimal value? Well, this is just where we're taking the max, right? We're trying to maximize the, the optimal value function is where we can get the maximum return. It's whatever policy gives us the maximum return, right? Um, and Q values similarly are S A equals the max over the policy um, to get the, of the expected trajectory sampled from the policy returns over the trajectories S zero equals S and a zero equals a. Um, so again, this is the same thing, right? The optimal Q value um, is always, you know, to get the optimal Q value or the optimal Q function, I should say, um, we're just trying to find the policy that maximizes the returns for every sort of state action pair. So these are actually kind of, you know, going off what we did last time. This is sort of what we were trying to do with J, right? We were trying to see what do we want? Well, we want to maximize the expected return, which maximizes J. Well, these are now two other things we can do. Um, we can get the optimal Q value or the optimal Q function or the optimal value function. And if we have these, um, I gave you the example with value. Well, let me give you sort of a more concrete example in tic-tac-toe, right? If we have this um, and say, uh, let's say we have an X here, an X here, an O here, um, and it's o turns to go, uh, O's turn to go, well, this is where we want to go, right? We always want to go here or else we're going to lose the game. So for O, um, you know, if we have an optimal Q value function, well, how could we use that to make the right move? And what we could essentially do is say, what's, in it? and I'm just going to give an example, uh, let's say a win is worth uh, plus one reward and a loss is minus one reward. Um, well, what would the Q value, if this again is optimal, of this taking an action here be? It would be negative one, right? Because we know we would lose, assuming the opponent is also playing optimally, right? We would lose because if we go here, X goes here, they win, that's a loss for us. So this would be a negative one Q value. What about here? Well, it'd be the same thing, right? Because we lose, same thing here, same thing here. And then this, 
this would likely be a non-negative uh, value. So here we could put an O here. And this, so, so this maybe would be like negative uh, 0 0.6. Like it's not looking good for us, but it's not an immediate loss. And that's how we could use this optimal Q uh, function to sort of choose what actions to take. And then that could lead us down an optimal path. So as we start crafting algorithms for these, and I think you can expect them in the upcoming uh, videos, maybe two videos or so down the line, you can expect to see these, uh, this sort of concept of values and Q values come up again and again and again. And for some reason, using Q values is just very popular. I don't know why that's like the one thing everyone knows, I think about reinforcement learning, that's just getting to do it. But, um, you know, it, I mean, it's a cool concept and it's very helpful. So that's why we do these. You can think of these as building blocks. That's where I'm going to end it here. There's really not much more to it. They're, they're fairly simple concepts. If you want maybe a little, uh, a little exercise you can do by yourself, I'd say derive, maybe, uh, maybe change these up a little bit. Uh, these functions and whereas last time right we crafted a function where the output was the optimal policy maybe you can try doing something like that again with value and q values if you want um, if you're having trouble leave a comment i'll help i'll give a little helping hand maybe some hints maybe the answer um, but i hope you enjoyed today's video i hope it was helpful hope you learned something if you hit that like button and subscribe if you did think this was helpful i would really think that is helpful to me Oh my gosh, that's enough of that. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in and I hope to catch you next time.